I knew that I wanted to do vertebrate zoology. And so that was Dr. Grinnell. And he said to me, you know, birds are difficult to study. It would be much simpler if you chose a worm. And I said, but I'm not interested in worms. I'm interested in birds. And that was sufficient. That's all I had to say. So he did accept me. What I wanted to do was to see the gamble sparrow on its migration route. Al invited me to go out and, uh, uh, and trap rats with him one evening um, in the Santa Rita Experimental Range south of Tucson, so I went out there with him. I'd never done anything like that. So I'd go out about 3.30 in the morning. And uh, I literally had one of those epiphanies of the moment, uh, opened a trap, a Sherman live trap, and saw a kangaroo rat and said, Wow, I had no idea anything like that ever existed. I put a colored band on them when they first arrived, and each day was a different colored band, so I'd know when they came. And then I'd know when they disappeared. And I just had such a great time doing that that I literally went over uh, the following week and uh, talked to Fred about uh, the fact that maybe I really was more interested in studying rats than I was humans. But when they came, they were thin. You could feel their breastbone, you could feel all the bones. And by the time they left, there were butterballs. You couldn't feel anything. So in a few days, they had, you know, replenished their energy supply and away they went. Now, why rats as opposed to shrews or whatever? Because there were a lot of rats in the Sonoran Desert. <laughs> and nobody knew anything about them. And I started out trying to find differences between these two races that had been uh, named, the Pugetensis race had been named by Grinnell, and I found so many more differences than I expected that I kept on going. I mean, all you have to do is, is uh, haul out, you know, a set of study skins to show that every little local population is visibly different. Okay, so you've got light ones on light soils and dark ones on dark soils, and you've got little ones in clay soils, and you've got great big ones in sandy soils. And so all you want to do is find out why they're different. And it didn't occur to me that there was going to be any world shaking thing. I was just going to try to find out the most I could, and that was it. I was up in the hills one day and I rolled a log and here was this amazing creature. It looked almost like it was translucent. I was just sitting on the bank on some stones and I happened to turn over a big rock and I was just sort of moving my hand through the sand and suddenly up in my hand I had one of these two-legged mole lizards and they bite one of these bite pieces. Big black eyes, kind of a whitish belly. I looked at this thing and I thought, oh my gosh, what a wonderful creature. It was the most amazing thing. At the time, they were very uncommon. So I got started with Encetina there. After I'd gotten my master's and had become a Stebbins student, we discussed what I should do my research on. And then when I came to Berkeley and went out with Dick Aiken, and he said, Bob, I'm gonna, I'll show you a, an Encetina that we have here in the Bay Area. He said, I said, I would like to study bite beasts. And we walked along the creek, and here was a very different looking animal. And Bob Stebbins says, well, of course, that's impossible. They're one of the rarest lizards in the world. Sort of a reddish brown, almost like a newt. Flip it over, orange belly, big yellow eye patch, no big dark eyes, no white belly, no pale skin. I thought, well, I've got a new species. And he said, why don't you study whiptail lizards? They're pretty common, and they're very obvious, and they're all over the desert. We don't really know that much about them. I just worked on many aspects of it, slowly unfolded over a period of a number of years. And I said, well, I'll think about it, but give me a year to see if I can figure out a way to study bite bees. What are they doing now? They're still working on it in large numbers and doing more and more wonderful detailed work. It's become a textbook of, for evolution. And by the end of my uh, dissertation research, 
the three species of bipeds, I had accumulated over 4,000 specimens. Thank you.